Hey, it's Derek with another edition of InstaGood on Now 100.5, powered by JustServe.org. Today, we're talking to Andy Hayes. He is the president of the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet. Andy, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having us on. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're on the, hopefully, we'll make some sort of serious recovery from the 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 problems that COVID-19 has caused in our community. And I know that you guys are doing your best to work around that to make sure that people are fed. Can you tell us about the mission of Auburn uh, Interfaith Food Closet and, and your vision, your values and everything else? So the, the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet was started in the late 1990s um, and, and with churches in the greater Auburn area getting together to uh, basically provide food pantry support for people. And it, it's been in existence now over 23 years and has over 4.4 million meals served out. Um, we don't provide cooked meals, but rather what we do is provide the groceries for people to make the food that they would want. Um, we don't have any questions about people who walk in the door. We assume if they are willing to stop in and they, they are of need. Um, but we do keep track of statistics to understand a, a bit about the makeup of people so we can plan. Um, prior to COVID hitting this community, we were at hitting 3% unemployment. And, um, and yet even then we were having 700 families a month come and need food from us. Um, it, the, you know, about 10% of those would have been classified as homeless, but a lot of them were the working people who needed additional things to make their budget stretch throughout the month. Um, wasn't the same people every month, probably 40% come regularly. Um, and we give out enough food to everybody. So, uh, they have three days worth of groceries for every person in the house. So if someone who walks in is uh, single, they get a, a bag or two of food. Someone who's got five people in the house is going to get quite a bit more. So we, we talk about food and, and many of us, uh, have access to it easily and we take it for granted and we forget that you know, food is, is one of the most basic necessities, if not one of, if not the most important necessity for basic human dignity and mm -hmm. giving that food to people in need is exactly what it's about. It's um, allowing them to maintain a level of dignity and a, a, a sense of self-worth and to be able to survive and a self of, a, excuse me, a sense of self-reliance. Now the food that you give them is that locally grown? How do you guys, where do you, where do you grow the food or get the food from? And where does the funding come from in, in order for you to be able to do this for people in need? Sure. So the Placer Food Bank is one of the network of food banks around the country uh, under the Feeding America umbrella. And their mission is to be what I call wholesale. So they have food coming in from many sources and we are one of the partner agencies in which that distributes out to. So if you look at our, we have about a half million dollar budget per year. About two thirds of that is food. About a third, a third of that food comes through Placer Food Bank. Uh, another third of that food comes through people donating it locally. And it could be a grower, it could be a uh, uh, family that goes to the store and, and just buys a little bit extra and puts it in a bag, could be through Food drives that is done, are done through our, our churches or some other organization. The last third we purchase, uh, and those are the um, the perishable items: the bread, uh, the breads, the the milk, uh, the cheeses, the meats, and things like that. So the, that can and then the rest of that uh, budget is then for our operation overhead to have the building, the facilities, and things like that. Sure. Um, that money, the money we have is raised by fundraisers. Um, and so we, we need about 200, $220,000 of cash per year. And we're raising that amount of money, uh, through various donations and, uh, pledges as well as, uh, uh, some grants. You know, a lot of, uh, of organizations like yours that I've talked to, they don't receive monies from the government. It, and you guys are one of those organizations. You do not receive uh, money, uh, government funded money, correct? Uh, not, not on, we had not normally. Um, with COVID and some of the governmental uh, agencies for CARES, uh, we ended up with some grants 
uh, mm -hmm. for that. Uh, one was for food right up front uh, that, that came through plastic. These are Placer County decisions. Sure. And, but other than that, no, the, 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 the indirect way that government money comes to us is through their support sure. of food going into Feeding America and back through Placer Food Bank. But largely, largely the donations and support you have are from individuals just yeah. like me and you, right? Yeah, you know we have we have probably uh, eight hundred people who give us money each year. Some of them give us twenty dollars a month, and that is a nice little stipend that helps us. Others don't do it that frequently, but will give us more money. We saw a lot of, you know, one of the interesting things about COVID was that the seniors, while the disease was, they were at highest risk for the disease they were at lowest risk for economic disruption because they were on fixed income and that kept sure. coming. And many of those didn't need the stimulus checks and they wrote them right over to us. Wow. Um, it was an, un, an unbelievable blessing that has helped us. Um, what's interesting with COVID is uh, we didn't see a huge surge in people needing food. Um, we, had, we anticipated that and we prepared for it, um, but another other, activities, government programs were kicked in and some of those were um, unemployment money that increased the budgets people had. And at the same time, some of those people weren't spending as much money because they weren't driving as far where they weren't, you know, so there, were, there was this balancing act that we just didn't see a lot of people put out of work. Much different from the 2007 to 2011 window where um, people were put out of work and they were desperate and um, didn't have the support come in at that time. So not only do you, does Auburn Interfaith Food Closet provide food to families, uh, so, they, you guys, go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry, I, I, I'll start your question again. I was going to say not only does the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet provide food, there's other ways that you guys help the community. In fact, if you go to auburnfoodcloset.org and I was looking around, you guys have recipes, recipes of the month, you have uh, events going on. And it's not just about uh, about food donations, it's also about monetary donations, of course, you guys take too. You can donate money, as you were saying, people do monthly. And you guys are looking for volunteers too. Yeah, yeah, we, we have about 200 volunteers regularly. We we ask them to put in an application, we vet them, uh, and then we find a place for them to fit in. Um, you know, last year, probably, or the year before COVID, which is Kind of the only one you can base off of, of what would norm be um we had twenty three thousand hours of volunteer you know wow. so each one of our volunteers is given about a hundred hours a, in a year you know? but we have some that do much less and others that do a lot more and and that's one other thing um we, we have no paid staff uh so right. we we we've been able to find people who have the skills to manage an organization like this and and do it uh, for, uh, as a volunteer work. And so that allows us to take the money we have and put much more of it back into the services for our clients. And earlier this year, you guys were a part of the big day of giving in May. Mm -hmm. And you have events that are going on throughout the year, right? For right. the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet. Is there, is there one coming up soon that people can get involved with? Well, we're in the formation each year in September. September is classified as Hunger Action Month. Mm -hmm. And what we've done uh, in the past is we've had a food drive um, and we'll drop bags at people's houses and ask them to, um, to, to fill them up and we pick them up the following week. Um, we're actually at a point right now where we have so much inventory that's come in um, that we're rethinking what we may do there. And one of the things we really want to do is make sure that everybody in our service area who would be eligible is aware we're here and willing to help them. And, you know, you, you mentioned a moment ago uh, the kinds of things we look people to do, but give us food, give us money. We also look for people to give us, uh, make it permissible for people to come. Um, there are people out there that are embarrassed to walk in our door. They've, they've been raised with the ethic that they have to take care of themselves and anything that suggests that they're getting help is a negative in, in, in the way they may have been think or the way they were raised. And so sure. yet they can be desperate and we would help them with no question. 
I was going to say a lot of people, and I understand this, you know, a son of immigrant parents, it was always uh, self-sufficiency and never asking people for anything. And there's, there's a very big level of pride. And I understand that a lot of people are raised that way. And uh, particularly, I think in the older generations, they have a lot of pride and they don't want to ask for anything. And the question is, for, first of all, for those people who are watching this, uh, you know, you see Andy and we're talking about this. Don't feel ashamed and don't let your pride get in the way if you are in need of the most basic necessity, which is food. This is what the Auburn Interfaith Food uh, Closet is for, to be able to provide for you. But what would you say to people to make them feel comfortable and to, to let them know that your doors are open so that they can get this resource? I think the people that are here serving are, they themselves get much out of being here to serve. Um, they are, they want to give back. They, they, their faith itself may tell them that this is part of the way they live out. And so when you walk in this door, you're actually making them feel good. <laughs> you know, you're, sure. you're allowing them to do what they want to do. Sure. Um, my wife was touring a, a, a nonprofit group through here yesterday uh, in our new building. And one of the ladies said, you know, I was a widow at age 23 with two children and lost the income. And if it weren't for people like you being there in that moment, which I could never have imagined in my life I was going to have to go through, uh, it was a blessing. And it happened to be that week my son had his birthday and I was not going to be able to do anything for a birthday. Well, you gave him a birthday bag. You gave me a birthday bag with a cake and a small present in it. And wow. it just, yeah. it was a touch of, of glory for her. So, you know, it, it, but at the same time, it, we, we, many people need somebody else to advocate that this is a good thing. And so sure. if, they, if they are embarrassed or concerned, you know, talk to somebody else and, and, and see if what they will say. I think you'll find a, it's a positive thing. And, and, that, and that's why we're doing this. And this is why I do this as often as possible with Instagood to draw attention to the fact that this resource is available and that people if they need it, they should come to you and they should use it. And again, you're there to serve people in need with respect and dignity. That's what it's all about. This is a, a, this is an organization, the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet, that does not ask for anything in return for people who need things from you. And that's the whole purpose of your organization. It's to remind people that we respect you and we know you you deserve a dignified life and, and we're going to give you the basic necessity and there's nothing to be ashamed of. And, and, and I think that's they, they, there's an element in society that assumes that anybody that comes to someone like this is is, uh, is, is has motives that aren't about taking care of themselves that the, or they're gaming the system or things like sure. that. And sure. I, yeah, for those people, that I, I invite them to come walk in the shoes of many of my, our clients because right. they, the stories of the people who, who become of need are one in which um, they aren't so obvious uh, and, and and at the same time in many cases giving them a little bit of help goes a long way for them being able to take on greater responsibilities elsewhere in their life right and, and you know for those people watching who are perhaps in need of your service or for people who want to get involved whether that's donating money or whether that's volunteering uh you could uh, what I what I really want to do personally, and I haven't had a chance to yet, but I'm going to, um, is tour the facility. And you guys invite people to tour and check out what's going on to see the work that you guys are doing physically on the ground, right? Yes, I and mean, and especially right now, we just opened a new a new building. It's a four year project that's come to fruition, and we had a grand opening two weeks ago. Uh, but we are providing tours to groups and individuals. If they want, they can contact us through the website and or our email address to say, hey, I'd like to. Um, but we also, for clients, if there, there's a concern, we'll be glad to give them a walkthrough too so that they can feel comfortable about what it is they're going to experience and exactly. then they can an informed decision. 
I think that transparency is really important because, you know, there's so many organizations out there and people are inundated, right? People are, uh, the organizations are always asking people for, for help or, or, uh, volunteerism or donations and to be able to physically go to the facility that is locally that is located in the sacrament it's in auburn itself i believe right 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 off the forest hill exit and again it's new and i know you guys were in transition uh not only office but also the facility itself to physically go there see what's going on get involved and see you know what kind of role you can play as a volunteer or uh, a donor and again, for people watching who are in need, this is a great resource in our community, and we are so thankful that you, that you're there. Uh, the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet, you guys are amazing, and I really appreciate you taking the time so much. One last question for you guys: Do do you do uh, delivery for seniors as well? We we started a program a year ago, uh, it, just before COVID started, uh, where once a month uh, we will we'll go out and deliver the same food they would get if they could come here. The qualification for that program is uh, residents that are not able to get here during our normal hours. Right. Um, so in many cases, it's seniors, but it can be other people as well. And so um, we, re we register them into this program, contact them the week before delivery just to make sure we're bringing the right food items for them and uh, take it out. Sure. Well, if you guys, if people who are watching, if you are in need of the services that the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet has, or you want to help, or you want to schedule a tour, I think the best resource is to go to the website, which is auburnfoodcloset.org, and you can get uh, tons of information there, and it's a really great website, and it's easy to use and, and very straightforward. Andy, we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for letting us know about what's going on at the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet and, and just fundamentally helping our community in the most important ways and uh, keep doing wonderful things. And we hope to see you soon and take a tour of the facility as well. We'll look, for, look forward for you and our Thank you, and Andy. Your team. Thank you much. Thank you. Once again, Andy Hayes, president of the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet. Thanks for joining us on another edition of InstaGood powered by JustServe.org.